Hey guys, welcome to the review session. So uh, today is our last meeting before the final exam, which will happen tomorrow. Um, well, let me tell you something about the exam, about the structure, what to expect tomorrow. Well, I think I, I told you a couple of things in the email, in the, in the three emails that I sent you about the exam. Um, <clears throat> well, there will be, I decided, uh, well, I received some emails um, yesterday. You know, there's a couple, there is a couple of you who, who have some religious things going on. So I decided to make it a 24 hour exam, but it, there will be only, uh, the exam will, will stay the same, will be one and a half hours. So it's kind of for 28 questions. So you better hurry because it's not going to be easy for you to solve. But anyway, yeah, I think last year it used to be like two and a half hours, but they decided because some people cheated, they decided to make it only one and a half hours. And the exam will be available tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. And you will have, like I said, 24 hours to complete it. Yes, I said 28 questions. So there will be, uh, in fact, let me start writing. Let me uh, just uh, write a couple of things to see. How, um, all right, so, um, so the structure of the exam. So the final exam, I can everybody see, okay, great. So the final exam will happen tomorrow. Is tomorrow, uh, which is uh, May 10th, right? Starting um, 9.30 a.m. Central Time. And it will be like a 24 hour uh, exam. 24, oh, you have a window of 24 hours to complete the exam. Oh, uh, but the exam itself, um, to complete it. Oh, well, a window of 24 hours, but the exam itself uh, will uh, last one and a half hours. So keep that in mind, it's kind of a, and there will be like 28 questions. So there'll be 28 questions and they will be structured in the following way. So there'll be 10 questions um, involving derivatives, just like the gateways. And 10 questions involving uh, integrals. So, and we will see a couple of examples. In fact, I will solve some of the problems um, from last fall. So derivatives and integrals, right? Just like the great gateways. And uh, by the way, I think somebody has its mic on. I don't see, I think, I think Mason, is that you? Um, okay. Gateways, right? All right. And um, there'll be uh, 14 um, and two questions. So there'll be 14, uh, 20, Wait, wait a second, we 20, uh, there'll be like, in fact, there'll be like not 28 questions. I think there'll be more than that. There will be like 34, sorry about that. I think it's 20, 34 questions because there will be like 14 other questions. So it, 34 questions, let me say in total. That's important to know. 
And also another thing that we will uh, have in uh, these 34 questions, there will be like 14 other questions. Um, right? 14 other questions. Um, and these 14 other questions will cover from topics that include um, the following. And uh, for example, it will include um, related rates. And we will see uh, examples in the, today. Extreme values, in fact, let me put them like this. Extreme values of, uh, uh, of uh, functions. Uh, also, it will include um, the mean value theorem. That will be a very important topic. Theorem. Uh, also, it will include uh, sketching the graph of functions, like how using derivatives. To sketch the graph of f, graph of a function. Um, what else? Um, limits involving infinity. And here, uh, I would suggest here is an important thing, important theorem is L'Hopital rule. You can apply it, right? And we'll discuss a couple of examples. And uh, let's see, another thing was will be op optimization problems. All right, let's see. There was a question here. Uh, yeah, but okay, maybe I'll extend it to the, the it's kind of uh, ruthless. Maybe I'll extend it to two hours because it's kind of like two minutes per question. That's in, a little bit insane, but that's the department rule. I mean, uh, but anyway, yeah, exactly. Anyway, I don't want to say anything here. Uh, I'll send you some uh, an, an email. Mm, well, I wouldn't go that far, but anyway. All right. So these are the. This is how the. This is the structure of uh, of the exam tomorrow. Um, and now I'd like to uh, discuss a couple of problems. Well, most of the problems that I will discuss today are taken from the um, from the previous exam, like I said in last fall. Do you have any questions regarding the structure of the exam? Is it clear for everybody? Um, will it be multiple choice? Yes, I forgot to say this, multiple choice. Yeah. Multiple choice exam, yes, correct. That is correct. Let's see, any other question? Oh my goodness, there are 41 of you. Wow, what the hell, it's too many. I'm shocked. Um, let's see, any other questions regarding the exam, the structure? All right, if not, let's uh, proceed. Uh, well, um, let me give you a couple of problems and we'll do, the, we'll do it in the following way. So, put in a couple of problems. And first I would like to start with questions which will involve derivatives, computing more computational problems which will involve derivatives and integrals. And then um, after that, uh, we'll do some other problems uh, invo involving those uh, topics that I just mentioned, like related rates and so on. Uh, all right. And the way we're gonna do it, like we're gonna just uh, mock uh, the exam. So I'm just gonna uh, say the following. So find the derivatives of the following functions. 
So, okay. Yeah, Frank, I think your mic is on. So make sure you turn your mics off so that uh, we... All right, so the following functions. And the first one let's say is f of x equals x squared times e to the power sine of x. Uh, the second one is uh, f of x is um, secant squared of x minus tangent squared of x. And the third one, um, is f of x equals x squared minus 3x over x squared. Uh, fourth one is f of x equals x squared times square root of x squared minus x. Fifth one is f of x ln of x squared plus one. And the sixth one, let's say, uh, is f of x equals e to the power x over x. And here I want to find, so find f prime of one. So I want to evaluate the derivative at uh, the point at x equals one. All right, so think about these for, uh, for a couple of minutes and uh, we'll discuss them. So imagine that uh, it's you're in the actual exam. Uh, Jonathan, can you turn off your mic, please? No. So every time, please, if you uh, like to answer, you turn on your mic and then you turn it off. So make sure you don't forget that. <clears throat> so let's wait a couple of minutes, like two minutes. Yeah, Eric, you also have your mic on. All right, let's see. So let's see the first one. So keep in mind that we need to find the derivative, pay attention, not the integrals. So first of all, I'll suggest you read the statement of the problem very, very carefully before you start solving the actual problem. Well, let's see the first one. How would you approach this one? 
I would like you to tell me. So you see, we have the function f of x is, let me write it again, it's um, x squared times e to, e to the sine of x. So what is this? Do you see anything here in particular about this one? What is it? The product rule you mean, yeah, exactly. So you see you have, we have the product of two functions, right? x squared and sine and e to the power of sine of x. So you see, let me write here is the product of two functions. And let's just write them down. Um, well, uh, I can write this. Okay, let me just write x, f of x as g of x times h of x, right? Where uh, g of x is x squared and h of x is e to the power of sine of x. All right, so when we take the derivative of uh, this guy, right? Um, right? So f prime, um, so we have that f prime of x is g of x times h of x prime, which is by the by the product rule. This is nothing else, right? Here, let's just, let's write. So this is the product rule. This is nothing else than g, g prime of x times h of x plus h prime of x times g of x. And now we need to compute the derivative of each uh, of those two functions, right? So we need to compute the derivative of uh, g of x and also uh, the derivative of h of x. So let's see, g prime of x is what? Well, that's quite easy to see is what? Tell me. Is two x, yes, exactly. And now let's see h prime of x. It's a little bit more complicated. It's e to the power sine of x prime. And this, what we, to compute the derivative of this guy, we're gonna use what? What do we use? The chain rule, exactly. So by the chain rule, right? So by the chain rule, We, this will be e to the power of sine of x times sine of x prime. Or if you want, this is e to the sine of x exactly times cosine of x, correct. So we have the derivative of g, we have the derivative of h, right? Look at this here, great. So now we can apply the, so f prime of x, which is x squared times e to the sine of x, prime by applying the product rule. So this would be two X times um, E to the sine of X plus um, E to the sine of X times cosine of X times X squared. And now we can factor E to the sine of X here. And this would be, in fact, we can even factor X times E to the sine of X. So it would be two, um, plus x cosine of x. And that's the answer. So this is how you do solve these problems. All right, so that's the first one. Uh, let's see the second one. So we would like to see uh, the second one. It's secant squared of x minus tangent square of x. All right, and let's see. Again, uh, we will use the chain rule here, right? Uh, but first we're gonna use the difference rule. So f prime of x is, let's write it, secant square of x minus tangent square of x prime. So this would be secant square of x prime minus tangent square of x prime, right? Here we use a difference rule. All right, and now we're gonna compute the derivative of each of these two guys. So what is the derivative of secant squared of x? So we're gonna use what? 
we're going to use the chain rule, right? So by the chain rule, secant squared uh, of x prime is going to be what? What's the derivative of that? Can you tell me? I'm all ears and eyes. Is what? Is two secant of x, right? Times secant of x prime. And you'll tell me what that is. Minus the same thing goes here, two tangent of x times tangent of x prime. So this will give us what? Two secant of x. What is the derivative of secant? You have to know this. Exactly. So it's secant of x tangent of x minus two tangent of x times what is the derivative of, uh, of tangent of x? What is it? Exactly. Times secant square of x. Or if you want, you can uh, do some. So this is two secant squared of x tangent of x minus two secant squared of x tangent of x, which will give us what? Zero, right? Pay attention, these are multiple choice. Uh, so if you miss one thing, then you have to go back to see what was your mistake and so on. So you better be careful with this. Okay. All right, let's see uh, the third one. So the third, so we've done this one and this one. Let's see the third one. So the third one looks like this. So it's x squared minus 3x, everything over x squared. All right, let's see. So we need to find f prime of x. What would you do in this case? Hmm? What is the first thing that you would do? You, uh huh. So we can use the quotient rule, correct? Exactly. Exactly. So we can write this. Um, so f of x, we have that. Uh -huh. Wait, wait a second, Muhammad. We'll get there. I want to show you both ways, and oh. so we can. But first, we can write this as a quotient. F of x is g of x over h of x, where g of x is x squared minus three x, and h of x is x squared. Right, and we're tempted to use the um, so f prime of x is g of x over h of x. And we would like to use the quotient rule. So this would be g prime of x, h of x, minus h prime of x times g of x, everything over h squared of x. All right, so that's the quotient rule. And you can do this. In fact, let me just uh, uh, write the derivative. So g prime of x will be um, x squared minus 3x prime, which will be 2x minus 3, and h prime of x is 2x. All right, and you can play around here. No problem, we can write it. In fact, let's write it. Uh, this would be um, h squared will be 2x squared. And here we, we will have g prime of x, which is 2x minus 3, times h of x, which is x squared minus h prime of x, which is 2x times mm, g of x, which, uh, which is x squared minus 3x. Great. And I will invite you to do the computations here. Good luck with that. 
we'll leave them to you as an exercise. So exercise for you. Ouch, sorry about that. All right. So that would be the derivative, whatever this is. But now maybe there is a simple way of doing this instead of doing all these computations, instead of applying the chain rule and so on, maybe you can do it in a different way. And maybe, it, uh, yes, exactly. Look, Muhammad and Frank, they, uh, we can say, look, maybe we can simplify this. And in fact, if you look at this guy here, look at it, the way it looks, we can actually simplify this. We can make our life uh, easier right from the beginning. So let's do that. So we can simplify F. Hmm. Let's do it. So we, we write F of X as X squared minus three X over X squared. And this would be X squared over X. In fact, we can even factor an X if we want. So this will be X times X minus three everything over x squared, which is x minus three over x, right? Or if you want, this would be x over x minus three over x. Or if you want, this would be one minus three over x. Wow, look how simple this looks now, right? And now clearly, F prime of X is nothing else than just this guy, one minus three over X prime. Uh, well, one prime will be, uh, so it will be negative three over X prime. Or if you want negative three times one over X prime. But what is the derivative of one over X? Can you tell me? What is that? What is it? The derivative of one over X is? Ooh, is the other way around. L n of x is the, the derivative of L n of x is one over x. If you want to integrate one over x, yes, exactly. It's negative one over x squared. Pay attention. It will be negative three times negative one over x squared, right? Which is three over x squared. So that's the final answer. And I'm sure you'll find it here as well. Just make sure you check the computations here. But anyway, you see, there is uh, when you're uh, when you're uh, under pressure and you have this time limit, maybe you look to simplify as much as you can your function, right? All right. Um, so this was the number, the, th the third one. If you, uh, any questions so far? No? All right. I hope it, uh, is everything clear so far? Okay. Let's see the fourth one. So the fourth one looks like this. F of X is X squared times the square root of X squared minus X. Again, find F prime. Well, what do you see here? Is there something that you see here in this, in this case? Hmm? Again, you see the product of two functions, right? Uh-huh, exactly. So you have the product rule and the chain rule, correct. All right, let's go. Let's do it. So, um, right, so you, you can write this as, let's say, g of x times h of x, if you want to identify the functions where g of x is x squared and 
uh, h of x is the square root of x squared minus x. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm. All right, and now let's compute the derivatives of this. Uh, all right, so g prime of x is 2x and h prime of x is the derivative of this monster here, which, uh, well, you see, we're gonna use the chain rule here, right? So let me write it prime. So this would be one over two square root of x squared minus x times x squared minus x prime. And now, uh, let's see, let's see. So this would be one over two square root of x squared minus x. Okay, let me write it. Give me one sec. All right, so this is one over two square root of x squared minus x times this guy here, which is 2x minus 1. Okay. Hmm. Right? And now we're going to use the product rules. So f prime of x is g of x times h of x, everything prime. So by the product rule here, so by applying the product rule, right? What do we have? So we have g, let's, let me write it, g prime of x times h of x plus h prime of x times g of x. And now let's uh, plug in the derivatives. So the g prime, so it's, let me write it here. So g prime of x was 2x, so it's 2x times h of x, which is this guy, the square root of x squared minus x plus h prime of x, which is one over two square root of x squared minus x times two x minus one, what a mess, times uh, g of x, g, g times x squared. Oh my, my, what a mess. Well, um, you can do the algebra here if you want, we can do it, although I'm not a big fan of this. So this would be 2x times x squared minus x plus um, 2x minus 1 times x squared, everything over um, over 2 square root of x squared minus x. Anyway, um, and if we compute even more, so this would be 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2x cubed minus two minus x squared over two square root of x squared minus x. Anyway, whatever, you do the algebra here. I don't want to spend my time in, but most, this is what the derivative is, looks like. Anyway, not funny, but uh, that was a problem. Uh -huh. All right. Let's see another one. The fifth question was to find the derivative of uh, this function, ln of x squared plus one. How to find the derivative of this one? What would you do here? Exactly, the chain rule, right? So f prime of x will be ln of x squared plus one prime. So this would be what? By the chain rule, this would be what? This will be one over uh, x squared plus one, right? Times x squared plus one prime which is uh, 2x over x squared plus one. And that's it. And the last one, the sixth one, it says the following, said that um, for f of x is e to the power x over x, find f prime of one. So, 
So what are we going to use in this case? You see, I don't think we cannot simplify the function in any way. So we're forced to use the, the what? I wanna hear it or see it. Hmm? We use what? We use the caution rule, right? So for, so f prime of x, which is e to the x over x, right? Prime. In this case, we're gonna use the quotient rule. So this would be e to the x prime times x minus x prime times e to the x, everything over x squared. So this would be the derivative of uh, e to the x is, uh, is e to the x times x minus e to the x over x squared. And you can factor here e to the x times x minus one over x squared. But now we're not done yet, pay attention here. We need to find f prime of one. So f prime of one, we're just gonna plug in uh, x uh, uh, one for x. So this would give us e to the power one minus one minus one over one squared. In any case, this would be zero. And that's it, right? All right, so this sums up, imagine you, you won't have only six, you will have 10 of them. So you have to be very quick. So you better know the rules by now. And I think we've discussed this over and over and over and over and over again. So um, that's why you won't have any any time, too much time to to think uh, of these. So you have to be quite uh, fast. Anyway, now let's see. Uh, I want uh, to do another six questions, but this time we'll, this will involve integrals. So let me see. How do I? Question two, let's say. Uh, how should I evaluate the following integrals? All right, so the first one is the integral from zero to one of two x times e to the power x squared dx. The second one is the integral from zero to one of x squared plus two x plus four over x dx. Uh, the third one is the integral from zero to one. So as you, so far, there are only definite integrals, dx over squared of x. Uh, let's see, the fourth one is the integral, and pay attention, this is uh, indefinite integral, x cubed plus x squared sine of x minus two, everything over x squared dx. The fifth one will be the integral of x sine of x squared dx. And the sixth one will be the integral from zero to pi of sine of x, cosine of x, dx. All right, guys, I want you to think of, uh, of these for five minutes. Again, you will have 10 of these, not just six.
All right, let's see. Let's see a couple of ideas. So how would you do the first one? So the first one is the integral from zero to one of two x e to the power x squared dx. Let's see. You see, you have the product of two functions inside. So it will be a little bit complicated to put your hands on some, on an antiderivative of that function that, that which is the product of other two functions. But maybe there is another way of doing this, like, so how would you approach this one? Exactly, u sub, right? And what kind of, let's see. So Eric says u substitution, aha, uh -huh, exactly. So maybe we could use a u sub here. So let's see. Yeah, the, these are good suggestions. So x squared equals u, right? So we're gonna use this substitution. All right, great. So let's take the differential here. So it will be dx squared is du or equivalently 2x dx is du, or if you want, you can write a dx, or this will be equivalent with dx equals one over uh, 2x uh, du, but which is the, uh, uh, actually, no, we don't need to do anything. Look, 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 nope, look at this. We already have uh, here, we already have dx, dx uh, 2x dx, look at this here. All right, we have two options here. We can change the bounds up front or we, we can compute the indefinite integral. And then at the end, we go back to our bounds when we go back to the initial variable. But anyway, let's just change, change the bound. So change the bounds of the integral. So in this case, when x is zero, u will be zero. And when x is one, u will be one. So the bounds will stay the same, great. So our integral, let's just call this i. So i, which initially was this guy here, two x times e to the x squared dx. Now will be, we'll change the variable. So it will be the bounds will stay the same from zero to one, right, as you can see here. And now let's see, two x dx is du, and uh, x squared is u, so it's e to the power u du. Hmm, wow. This looks so simple now, right? It looks very, very simple at this point. So the antiderivative of e to the, uh, to the power u, as you already know, it's the same when you take the derivative or the antiderivative is e to the power u from zero to one. And by using the fundamental theorem of calculus, this would be e to the power one minus e to the power zero is e minus one. And that's the final answer, right? Any questions, does this make sense? Hmm? Okay. I hope it's uh, clear. So that's the first one. This is how you do the first one. All right, let's see the second one. Look at this rational function. I was about to say, look at this monster, but uh, let's see, let's see. Ah, okay. Wait, what's, yeah, ln of E is one, yes. Anyway, all right, let's see the second one. So let's just say again, I, this is the integral from zero to one of, let me, so it was x squared plus two x plus four over x. Everything over x. Whoa, 
what would you do here? I'm curious, how would you approach this one? Hmm? Uh huh. Exactly. So maybe we can split the uh, fractions here. So this would be uh, the integral from zero to one, and now let's be let's split the fractions. So it's x squared over x plus two x over x plus four over x dx. And now we can use uh, the linearity of the integral. So, but anyway, let's just do the algebra first in inside. So this would be x plus so plus two plus four over x dx. And now we could use that the integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals. So this would be the integral from zero to one of x dx plus the integral from zero to one of two dx plus the integral from zero to one of four over x dx. All right, great. And now let's just do some, uh, again, we're gonna take the constants out, right? You see this one, I'm gonna take it out. Again, we gotta have a four on the third integral. So this would be the integral from zero to one of x dx plus two times the integral from zero to one of dx, right? Plus four times the integral from zero to one of one over x dx. So this would give us, let's see, what does this give us? So the first one, the antiderivative of, uh, of x is x squared over two from zero to one, pay attention. Don't forget about that. Plus two times the antiderivative of one here because here is the function one is x from zero to one plus four times. And what is the antiderivative of one over x? So what is that function whose derivative will give you one over x? Is ln of x from zero to one, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right. All right, so let's see, this would give us, uh, I think it's, uh, you see, this is an integral has problems. I don't know how they did this. Anyway, anyway, I'll explain. Uh, so this would be one half plus two plus four times, and pay attention here, this is ln of one, which is zero minus ln of zero, which depends on how you look at it, um, will be infinity if x is greater than zero. So um, anyway, so this would be, one half plus two times four, ln of one is zero. And minus this guy here, ln of zero, which is not defined. So it's, that's a problem with this integral. I think they made a mistake. Let me see. Yeah, that's strange. Why they... Anyway, let me put it like this. I hope they didn't do this uh, at the exam tomorrow. Because you know, this is an improper integral. So you have to take the limit basically at, uh, at zero, but you haven't learned about that. Anyway, oh, wow. All right, let's see the third one. So the third one was the integral from zero to one of dx over square root of x. So let's see, how would you approach this one? <sighs> hmm. How would you approach this one? Tell me.
So how can we write this? You see, maybe you can write this as the integral from zero to one of uh, one over square root of x times dx, right? Or if you want, this would be the integral from zero to one of uh, one over x to the power one half, right? dx. Or if you want, we can write this as the integral from zero to one of x to the power negative one half dx. Okay, and uh, do you remember something? We said something that the integral from, let's say from zero to one of x to the power alpha dx is what? Is x to the power alpha plus one over alpha plus one, right? The antiderivative from zero to one which is what is uh, one over alpha plus one. And that's it, right? I think I've discussed this a couple of times uh, in the lecture when I, we, we computed the uh, integral indefinite and definite integrals. I remember quite well that. So in this case, you see alpha in this case is uh, negative one half. So this is our alpha. So this implies that the integral from zero to one of x to the negative one half dx is what? Is x to the power negative uh, one half plus one over negative one half plus one. Uh, right, from zero to one, so pay attention. So this would be one over, one half, right? Which is two. And that's that's the value of the integral. That's it. Right? Does it make sense? Okay. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's see the fourth one. So the fourth one was um, an indefinite integral this time. So pay attention. So it's the integral of x cubed plus x squared sine of x minus two, everything over x squared. So what would you suggest, suggest in this case? Hmm. Let's see, what would you suggest in this case? You see, I, again, I have a mess there, so I need to do something about it. So what should we do? Well, I can hear you. Simplify, again, let's simplify. So this would be the integral of, let's see, x cubed over x squared plus x squared sine of x over x squared minus two over x squared dx. All right, so let's do the algebra here. So this would be the integral of uh, x plus, so here, plus sine of x minus two over x squared dx. And now we're gonna use the linearity of the integral. So this would be the integral of x dx plus the integral of sine of x dx minus two times the integral of one over x squared dx. Beautiful. And now we're gonna, we can compute uh, the antiderivatives of this. In fact, let's just write it a bit. So this would be again, the integral of x dx plus the integral of sine of x dx minus two times the integral of x to the negative two dx. And this is, so the antiderivative of x is x squared over two plus, uh, pay attention here, the antiderivative of sine of x is negative cosine. Right, minus two times, and the antiderivative of this would be e, e, e. 
x to the power um, negative 2 plus 1 over negative 2 plus 1. Plus c, don't forget about c, right? And now let's put everything together. So this would be x squared over 2 minus cosine of x minus 2. Um, Uh, times uh, x to the negative 1 over negative 1, or if you want, x squared over 2 minus cosine of x plus 2 over x, and that's the final answer, plus c. Uh, don't forget about that. And that's your final answer. All right. It's, uh, it's pretty easy. All right, now let's see the fifth one. What about this integral? The integral of x sine of x squared dx. So what do you think about this one? Exactly, so we're gonna uh -huh, u sub, right? So again, let's do u equals x squared. Okay, and du will be dx squared, which is 2x dx. And now we can say that uh, x dx is 1 half du. Great, so we have this. And so this integral will become uh, you see, we have this guy here, uh, x dx. Look at this guy here. So this would be um, sine of u times uh, x dx, it will be du. And what is the integral of sine of u? Is negative cosine of u plus c. Now we go back, pay attention, we go back to the initial substitution. So this would be negative cosine of u is of x squared plus c, and that's it. There you go. See, it was pretty simple if you, uh, if you see the substitution, the u sub. All right. Now let's see the sixth one. And this is a bit tricky. What about this one? The integral from zero to pi of sine of x times cosine of x, dx. What would you say here? By the way, these are these were the actual uh, exam problems from last fall, so. So how would you approach this one? U sub, huh? Hmm. What kind of substitution substitution would you use here? In fact, it doesn't really matter which one. Let's try. Let's see, let's, what if you use something like um, sine of x equals u? Um, in fact, it's not as tricky as that. Yeah, exactly, sine of x equals u. So d sine of x equals du, but the derivative of sine of x will be cosine of x dx is du. Hmm, great, great. Again, look at this guy here. Cosine of x dx, look at this, this is du, all right. And now let's not forget to change the bounds, right? When um, u is zero, oh, sorry, when x is zero, when x is zero, u will be what, tell me? And when x is pi, u is what? 
So what are the bounds? Hmm? Sine of zero is what? Is zero. And now here we go. Sine of pi is what? Tell me. So the change will be bounds will be zero to one, right? So this integral will become the integral from zero to one of u du. So if you want, this would be um, <laughs> so this would be the u squared over two from zero to one, which will be what? Which will be one half, and that's the value. Great. I see somebody wants to take a. Well, well, no, he wouldn't have time to take it for you as well. So, even if you know if he knows the questions. Anyway. So this sums up the first two parts, right? Well, the first part, if you want, with those uh, ten questions for each derivatives uh, for the computation of derivatives f um, and integrals. <laughs> That's a funny one. Um, well, it's a multiple choice, so um, I don't get to see which uh, substitution you use. I don't, I don't get to see exactly the work. Anyway, so this is what you should expect uh, in the first part. And now let's see some other questions which are a little bit more uh, involved, I would say. Well, I wouldn't say that involved, but uh, I'd like to do a couple of them. Maybe I wouldn't have time to do all of them, but uh, a couple of them definitely I'd like to do. Um, all right. Um, let me see here. Let me start with the following problem. Let's say problem one. First, a state the mean value theorem. In fact, this was one of the questions. And we're going to abbreviate this by MVT for differentiable functions. Or for derivatives, let me put it this way. And then the second part was the following, was um, find the value C um, that satisfies the mean value theorem, right, for the function Uh, f of x equals x cubed plus 4 on the interval, pay attention because this will be important, on the interval 0, 3. All right, so that's the statement. All right, I want you to think of this problem for a couple of minutes.
let's see. So, um, let's start with the mean value theorem first. Let's recall the mean value theorem. So the mean value theorem. says the following. So let me write this in red. So it says that I have a function, let's say defined on an interval a, b, real valued function uh, such that, um, well, let me just say f satisfy, satisfies, the following conditions. Right? And the two conditions are the following. The first one is that um, F is differentiable. On the open interval AB. And the second one is that F is continuous on the closed interval AB. Then the theorem states that um, there exists a point C, so we will have something like this. F prime of C is F of B minus F of A, everything over B minus A or some C in AB. So that's what the, um, the theorem says. All right, so this is a statement, right? And now um, we would like to apply this statement to this function. So we'd like to find that point C uh, which uh, for this function for x cubed plus four, and pay attention. It says that this function satisfied the mean value theorem on this interval here, on zero three. That that's the interval where it's at. All right. So now what we're going to do is just we're going to apply so apply the mean value theorem for the function f of x equals x cubed plus four on the interval zero three. All right, let's do it. Clearly, uh, first of all, we need to see if this function satisfies uh, the actual conditions from the mean value theorem. And I don't think, uh, um, there is a problem for you to see this, right? You can actually see it easily, right? So clearly uh, F defined on this interval zero three real value uh, F given by X cubed plus four is differentiable and uh, on zero three and continuous. on the interval, close interval zero three, right? Okay. So now, since the two conditions are met from the theorem, let's just apply the theorem. So by the mean value theorem, uh, there exists this number C in uh, zero three such that f prime of c, in our case is f of three minus f of zero over three minus zero. Or if you want, is one third times f of three minus f of zero. And now we just need to evaluate. Let's evaluate this guy on the right hand side. So f of three, so this would be one third times f of three is what? So f of three 
is, uh, let's write it here, f of three separately. So it's three cubed plus four, which is 27 plus four is 31. And f of zero is um, zero cubed plus four, which is four. Great. So this would be 31 minus uh, four. And this would be one third times uh, 27. Or if you want, this is nine. Great. So f prime of c is nine. But now we need to compute the derivative. But f prime of x, the derivative of f is uh, 3x squared. So we will have that 3c squared equals 9. Or if you want equivalently, c squared equals uh, 9, or equals 3, sorry. Or which is equivalent, I'd like you to pay attention here, c equals plus minus square root of 3. But now pay attention where c, in what interval the c is, because this is a, you might fall into this trap. So c is between 0 and 3. So therefore you're gonna drop the one with the negative. So this will imply, but since C is in the interval zero three, it follows that C, we're gonna keep only the square root of three and that's it, we're done. Does it make sense? So what you need to do at this, uh, in this problem is to know the statement of the mean value theorem and then to apply it to this function. So you're gonna have something like this at the final exam. 100% 100 sure you're gonna have something like this. Let's see, any questions? Scroll back down, okay. And again, you can play around with these, like you can take some other functions if you want, whatever function you want, and you can um, you can invent yourself a function. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, x to the fifth plus four x plus five, for example, and pick yourself whatever interval you want, maybe one, two, and just, you can solve the, you can mimic the same argument and you can solve that. All right. Well, like I said, pay attention. We this is a trap here because you might fall into this trap. Do not forget the fact that c is between is in the interval zero three. So when you solve this quadratic equation, like in our case, uh, c squared equals three, you will have you will get two solutions, right? So you get uh, one of them is square root of three, uh, right? Positive square root of three, and the other one is negative square root of three. So you're gonna drop the negative one. Does it make sense? All right, let's see some other, um, I have here some other questions. I'm not sure if I will be able to, I'll be able to cover all of them, but uh, let's see, let's try as many as, to cover as many as possible. In fact, now, um, let me just do a word problem. And so problem two, so is the following, A states the following, so, Um, a 13 feet ladder is leaning against, so this is like a related rates problem, a house when its base starts to slide away. Uh, by the time 
the base is 12 feet um, from the house. The base is moving at the rate of five feet per second. Five feet per second. The question is, how fast is the top of the ladder right sliding down uh, the wall at this point? All right, so that is the question. I want you to think a bit. So let's see, let's identify uh, the key points in this problem. So you see we have a ladder, 13 feet ladder, that's an important thing, which is leaning against a house. Um, when its base starts sliding away, this is important uh, to know. So by the time the base is 12 feet from the house, the base is moving at the rate of, so it's also about the base, it's at the rate of five feet per second. When you hear the word rate, right, you think of the derivative always. And now the question is how fast, so again, we need another rate, is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? Hmm, let's draw a picture. I think a picture would make some sense, but so um, let's see. So we have a house. I'm going to draw a house. This is a house, let's say. Well, kind of looks like a one. Anyway, I'm going to write house here anyway. So this is the house, and here we have a ladder, let's say. And we know one thing about the ladder. So we know that the ladder is leaning against the house. And we know that uh, at the base of so this guy is X, let's say, which is 12. And the ladder is like 
the 13 feet. So let's say this is L, which is 13. And now let's just say that this is Y. So what we know, let's see what we know. So what do we know? So we know the following. So we need to identify first what, uh, what we know. So we know that uh, the length of the ladder, let's say L is 13, right? So L is 13 feet. So the length of the ladder What else? We know that uh, the base X equals 12 uh, is when the rate of change so it's the, we know that the base is moving at the rate of so the rate of change of the base is um, dx over dt, right? Five feet per second. Great. So we know this. And we need to figure it out what dy over dt. So one, we want to find out what do we want? So what do we want? We want dy over dt. That's what we want. Great. But pay attention because this is tricky. So we want to find dy over dt at the rate when uh, dx over dt is five, right? All right. Now let's look at this guy here. Can someone tell me what, what is this guy here? If you look, what is this thing here? Is a right angle triangle, right? So a good um, old friend of ours called Pythagora, um says the following says uh, tells us that so pythagora tells us that um what does it tell it says that x squared plus y squared equals l squared or if you want x squared plus y squared equals um equals what equals 13 squared, 169. Anyway, in any case, you can say that, um, well, anyway, we can keep it like this. So what do we need to find? Keep in mind that we need to find this. So we just use implicit differentiation. So by implicit differentiation, We have the following. Uh, that um, what do we have? So let, let me just write it like this. Or if you want, this would be the. Or if you want, uh, this guy will be 2x dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt equals zero, right? All right, so that's what we have. So we have this equation here. So we reach out uh, to this equation. And now for x equals 12, we know that y will be what? Will be 13 minus the square minus 12 squared, right? Which is the square root of 25, which will give us five. So y is five. And now the only thing we need to do is just replace. So finally, this will give us, let's replace. So we know who x is, we know who y is, let's do it. So it's uh, two times 12 times dx. We know who dx over dt is. So it's what, it's five. 2 times 12 times 5 plus 2 times oh, 5 times dy over dt equals 0. And from here, you can just uh, do the algebra, and dy over dt will give you negative 12 feet per second. And that's it. 
that's how you solve these kind of problems. Anyway, this it's a pretty standard strategy to solve this. So, like I said, everything is starts with uh, our very good friend of ours called Pythagoras. So, let's see. Any questions about this problem? Is everything clear? I, I, I think we have done these kind of problems uh, over and over again. So yeah, this was one of the problems given at the exam last fall. All right. Now let me uh, move towards other problems. So let's see the uh, problem three, let's say. which says the following. So let's uh, do some, um, okay, uh, an easy one. The question was like this, on what interval um, does the function f of x, which is given by four x squared, plus six x plus seven increase. All right, so think about it for a couple of minutes. So how would you approach this one? Exactly, so we, when you hear it about the, the word increase, right? Increasing function, but exactly like Cameron says, you need to take the derivative, but even more than that, what do you, you want from that derivative to be what, to be how? To be? Well, exactly, positive, yeah, exactly. So, so let's take the derivative. Of f, so we have, yeah, I understand, yeah, yeah. So f prime of x is, um, Right, this four x squared plus six x plus seven prime. Right, so this is eight uh, x plus six. So we would like to see when this is uh, increasing. Let's say non-negative. When? So the question is, when is eight x plus six non-negative? So this is easy to solve. This is uh, equivalent with eight x greater than negative six, or if you want, x is greater or equal than negative six over eight, which is, which is what is three negative three over four. So for values greater than, uh, for values of x greater or equal than negative three over four. So for x 
greater or equal than 3 over 4, or equivalently, when x is in the interval negative 3 over 4 infinity, it follows that f prime of x is non-negative. It follows that f is increasing or non-decreasing, depends. You can include 0, exclude 0, whatever. So if you don't, if you want to include 0 in the derivative, you're going to have a, a closed interval on the left, right? If not, you will have open interval. So but anyway, so it's pretty standard, pretty easy. All right, and now let's see some other problems. So problem four, and um, in this case, we would like to find uh, some limits. So evaluate the following limits at infinity. Following limits at infinity. All right, let's see. Um, the first one is lim as x approaches infinity of square root of four x squared plus seven over x minus seven. The second one is the lim as x approaches infinity of four x squared or four x cubed, sorry, plus x over x squared minus 2x cubed. The third one is the limb as x approaches positive infinity of x squared times e to the negative x. And the fourth one is the limit as x approaches infinity um, of ln of x, everything to the power 1 over x. OK. So I want, I'd like you to think of these problems for a couple of minutes. So what is the first thing that we learned when we dealt with limits at infinity? Do you remember there was this magic result that we learned? Back, I don't know, I think like it was like a month ago, something like that. Do you remember it? What was what was the name? Hmm? L'Hopital, right? <clears throat> but anyway, in the, the proof of, uh, in the solution of, of these problems, I will alternate. Some of them, I'll solve them using L'Hopital rule, some others without L'Hopital rule. But anyway, let's see. All of them can be solved using L'Hopital rule if you want. So I'll leave this to you as a homework. Let's see the first one. So the lem as x approaches infinity of the square root of 4x squared plus 7 
over x minus 7. First of all, I would like you to tell me what kind of indeterminate indeterminate do we have here? Hmm? What is it? If we plug in infinity, so this would be infinity over infinity, right? Great, we can apply L'Hopital rule. I'll leave it to you as a homework, but I like to do it in a different way. Maybe I'll try to, you see, I have the square root there. So I'll force a factor of X squared out of that, out of that square root. And then I'll force a factor of X on the bottom. All right, let's do so. So we write the limit uh, as, um, x approaches infinity of the square root of 4x squared plus 7 over x minus 7. This would be, and I'd like you to pay attention here. So I'll force a factor here. So the square root of x squared times 4 plus 4 over 7 over x squared, everything over. And here I'll uh, force a factor x times 1 minus 7 over x. So this would be the limb as x approaches infinity of, and here, uh, let's just say this is, well, it's absolute value of x, but anyway, let's just take x times the square root of uh, four plus seven over x squared. Everything over x times one minus seven over x. Great, beautiful. So this would be, the limit as x approaches infinity of these two guys cancel here. So this would be the square root of four plus seven over x squared uh, over one minus seven over x. All right, great. As x approaches infinity, these guys here, this guy here approaches zero. This guy here will approach zero. So this would be, uh, guess what? It will be the square root of four plus zero over this one minus zero. So this would be two. So that's the result. Like I said, try to do it using L'Hopital rule. Um, so one can use, so one can use L'Hopital rule. I'll leave it to you as an exercise to do it. But please do it so that you can check yourself in two ways. All right, let's see the second one. Let's see, are there any questions regarding this one, the first one? Any questions? All right, it's, uh, does everything make sense? All right, now let's see the second one is this limit. And I'm trying to, I think I'm gonna use the same approach or maybe I'll use both of them. So the limb as X approaches infinity of four X cubed plus X, everything over, let's see on the bottom is X squared minus three X cubed, huh? Is it? Yeah, that's what it is. Anyway. At best case scenario, we'll have the indeterminate infinity over infinity, even on down on the bottom, it's kind of sketchy because we have infinity minus infinity. But anyway, uh, we can factor an X there so we can uh, pull it out uh, infinity over, in, over negative infinity or something. But in any case, at best case, we'll have infinity over, over infinity. So we can use L'Hopital rule. So let's try to use L'Hopital rule. So this means that the limit as X approaches infinity of four X cubed plus X over X squared minus three X cubed. So this would be the limit as X approaches infinity of four X cubed plus X prime, everything over the derivative of uh, X squared minus three X cubed. So this would be the limb 
as x approaches infinity. So let's see on the top, we have uh, 12 x squared plus one over um, two x minus um, nine x squared. Again, you can, you don't have to stop. Again, it will be infinity over infinity. So apply L'Hopital rule. So this is LH here. Again, LH. So this would be the limb as x approaches infinity of 12x squared plus one prime over two x minus nine x squared prime. So this would give us the limit as x approaches infinity of oh, 24x over two minus 18x. So again, let's apply L'Hopital rule one more time. We have infinity over infinity. Again, so this would give us the limb as x approaches infinity of 24 over negative 18, right? So this is 24 over negative 18, which will give us what? This would be uh, negative 24, um, Over nine, so it will give us what? Uh, Twelve over nine, four over three, negative four over three. Anyway, so that's the result, right? So that's uh, using L'Hopital rule. Let's see without L'Hopital rule. So let's uh, also solve this. So without L'Hopital rule, how would would we do this? Again, we're gonna factor, we're gonna force a factor. So we have that the limb as x approaches infinity of four x cubed plus x, everything over x squared minus three x cubed. In fact, we can, um, we can factor some things out. Let's get rid of some things. We can uh, have an x here. So it's four x squared plus one over x times x minus three x squared. Great, we can get rid of this guy. So this is the limb as x approaches infinity of four x squared plus one over x minus three x squared. All right, great. Now we can force a factor of x squared on both top and the bottom. So this would give us, this is the limb as x approaches infinity of Let's force here on the top and x squared. So this would be x squared times uh, four plus one over x squared. And on the bottom, we will have x squared. It will be x over x squared minus three, which is, if we do some algebra here, this would be four plus one over x squared, everything over, uh, mm -hmm. 1 over x minus 3. And now guess what? As x approaches um, infinity, this guy will approach 0. Again, this guy will approach 0. So the final result will be 4 plus 0 over 0 minus 3. In any case, it will give us negative 4 over 3. You see, it's the same thing. We just did it in, uh, we did this two different, in two different methods. So that was the difference. I hope, does it make sense? All right, so this was the second one. Let me see, uh, uh, let me do the third one. So the third one is the limit as X approaches infinity of X squared times E to the negative X, right? That This is it, I think. Plus infinity, okay. So it may... All right. Again, this is uh, a, a standard prototype for uh, L'Hopital rule. So we can write this as the limb as x approaches infinity of x squared over e to the x. 
Again, it's infinity over infinity. So we use L'Hopital rule. So let's do it. So we have that the limb as X approaches infinity of um, X squared over E to the, uh, the power X. So this would be the same as the limit as X approaches infinity of uh, X squared prime over E to the X prime, uh, which gives us the limit as X approaches infinity of two X over E to the X. Again, if it's infinity over infinity, here you can apply again L'Hopital rule. Uh, this will give us the uh, that this it's equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of two x prime over e to the power x prime, and this would give us the limb as x approaches infinity of uh, two over e to the x. And now clearly, as you plug in uh, as x as x approaches infinity, this will be two over infinity, which is zero, and that's it. And now let's see the last one, the fourth one, which is a little bit more tricky, as you can see. So it's what, it's ln of x to the power one over x. So, so the, the limb as x approaches infinity of ln of x to the power one over x. As you can see, if you plug it in, so it's infinity to the power zero, that's the indeterminate. But you need to do something to make it look like some kind of um, infinity over infinity or zero over zero, so that you so that you can apply the L'Hopital rule. So we can take the log. So take the natural log, and once you do so, uh, we're going to have the following. So ln of the limb. Let me denote the limit as L. So of um, ln of x to the power one over x is the limit of the log. Is the limb as x approaches infinity of, um, wow, I already have a log there, but anyway, it's fine. ln of ln of x, right? to the power one over x. So let's take care of this guy here inside the log, right? Let's take care of this guy here. And once we take care of this guy here, we're gonna have the following. So this would be equal to, let's pay attention. So this is the limb as x approaches infinity of uh, ln of, um, You see, we have here ln of um, um, so yeah, we're gonna have what? We're gonna have um, wait a second, wait, wait, wait. I don't want to get confused here. So what do so it's ln, it's ln of ln of x, right, over x. All right, great. So we have to take care of this limit here, right? So if we take care of this limit here, so we will have that so we need to compute the limit as x approaches infinity of ln of ln of x, wow, over x. Again, this is infinity over infinity. If you just plug it in, then you, you will use L'Hopital rule. So by the L'Hopital rule, We have that, let's see, what do we have? So we have that the limb as X approaches infinity of 
ln of ln of x over x is the limb as x approaches infinity of the derivative of ln of ln of x prime over x prime. But in any case, um, you see you have the derivative. Uh, and anyway, I'll leave it this to you details to show that this is actually zero. So, and it's an exercise. Right, the derivative of x is one. So you have, you know that the derivative of ln is one over, uh, right? So you use the chain rule here. Keep in mind that ln of u of x, right, prime is one over u of x times u prime of x. But in our case, u of x is actually ln of x. So I'll leave this to you to compute the derivative and show that actually the limit is zero. But we're not done. So uh, this implies that the uh, the ln of l is zero. So ln of l is zero. So l will be e to the power zero, which is one and we're done. Does it make sense? I went a bit faster at the end, but uh, you know. In any case, I'll send you the notes also, not just the video. Let's see, any questions of, uh, about this one? All right. Um, well, guys, I think this sums up uh, the entire course at this point, including the review sessions. This is the last time you're going to see my face um, at Tech. So um, this was actually my last course that I taught at Tech. Um, well, I'd like to thank you, uh, thank you all uh, for for being great students. Uh, who knows, maybe I'll see you at some point. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be out of the US for two years. Uh, hopefully I'll come back. But anyway, um, I wish you good luck tomorrow uh, at the test. So I'm going, I'll be, I'm going to China for two years. So I'll be teaching there. Um, but hopefully I'll come back at some point. All right, uh, I'll send you the video and also the notes. And um, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know. All right, guys, good luck tomorrow. I'll see you, bye-bye.